You seriously gotta hand it to Samsung for not holding back on their own set of leaks. Because yes, it seems the company has decided to take leaks into their own hands as we get a list of expectations from none other than the top brass. More leaks give us some sort of confirmation on what changes are coming to the new iPad mini and they keep getting good. And if you're currently waiting for the OnePlus 9T to come and save the day in the fall, well, you might want to plan differently. I'm Jaime Rivera, and uh, just keep in mind that if I walk into any video with this pizza face, it's called horrible jet lag. This is Pocket Now Daily, sponsored by NordVPN. Stick around as we've got a great deal for you on our VPN of choice. Once again, the official news today begin with deals, and if you're looking for a laptop, it's your lucky day, sort of. Starting with the Razer Book 13, which is $170 off, that means that you can get the Intel Core i7 variant for 1430. If gaming is your thing, the ASUS ROG Sephiroth Ultra Slim laptop that I hope I pronounced correctly is uh, offering a $276 discount. And you actually get some neat specifications for $1592, but just keep in mind the GPU is a bit outdated, which is an irony. Samsung's 15 inch Galaxy Book Pro is also $150 off, so the base model is available for $950. To conclude with laptops, yes, the MacBook Pro is still offering a $200 price drop, leaving the base model for $1099. And for those of you that are in the market for a smart speaker, the Google Nest Mini is available in a three pack for $64, saving you around $83 in the process. Finally, the Amazon Echo Buds are also $30 off, leaving them at $110, and you can save an extra 25% if you have a trade-in. We have more deals on LG monitors and earbuds, and you can still reserve your devices for Samsung's Galaxy Unpacked in the first link of the description if you want to get the crazy perks and more on that on the final segment. But all right, let's stick to official news for a second, and this time we'll be talking about nothing and no. This is not a terrible pun from Diego. I'm actually talking about Carl Pace Company as they finally launched their first product after months of teasers. These true wireless earbuds are called the Ear Ones and they bring a pretty interesting transparent design that actually looks pretty cool. Each earbud weighs 4.7 grams and they come with a soft silicone tip for a better seal. Both earbuds are bringing a 31 milliamp hour battery that can last up to four hours of ANC playtime or six hours without ANC. However, the charging case gives you an extra 24 hours with ANC on or 34 hours if you decide to switch it off and a 10 minute charge will give you one hour of extra playtime. They offer Bluetooth 5.2 connectivity, different levels of ANC and Google fast pairing support. They are priced at either $99, euros, or pounds and are currently available for pre-order on Nothing's website. I mean, they look pretty cool and have a very competitive price tag. Let's see how they sound, but at the same time, if you're wondering what's so special and how do they blend differently to any other earbuds as uh, all of Nothing's marketing was about, I'm still asking myself the same question. And speaking of Carl Pei, how about if we talk about his previous company? OnePlus at this point is usually gearing up to whatever T-Series we usually get, right? Well, on a new tweet from Max Jambor, in his typical fashion, he simply states, no 9T. And uh, this doesn't really come as a surprise as last month, a leak from Weibo claimed that OnePlus would scrap the 9T Pro like they did last year where we only got the regular 8T and no upgrade for the Pro. Now, if you're a fan of the T variants and are wondering why the company would skip it this year, even though we don't have any official information, it kind of makes sense. For starters, we're still going through a global chip shortage, which has affected pretty much every single company's release dates. And on top of that, OnePlus recently announced that they would be further integrating their brand with Oppo, so that could be another reason. But to top it off, I mean, apparently OnePlus has found some great success with the 9 series, as they were the fastest growing OEM in the United States for the first half of the year with a crazy 428% year-over-year growth, with the closest company being Motorola with 83%. So poor sales are definitely not one of the reasons, but we'll keep an eye out on what we could get on Q4 because 
That could not necessarily be the 9 series, it could also be the Nord. How about if we switch to the product I really want Apple to release, the new iPad mini, iPad mini Pro, whatever it's gonna be. Rumors have been ramping up over the past week or so, and um, now we get some sort of confirmation for previous reports. See, a Minchi Quo update from back in May mentioned an 8.5 inch to nine inch iPad mini, and now we've got a new tweet from Ross Young mentioning that the iPad mini will bring an 8.3 inch display. He mentions in another tweet that it's growing from 7.9 inches due to the slimmer bezels and the removal of the home button. Now, there were a couple of mixed reports saying that the home button was staying, but now multiple trusted sources agree that Apple is going for more of an iPad Air-esque approach with a boxy design, slim bezels, and Touch ID in the power button. Other leaks mention that this iPad mini would be powered by the A14 Bionic or even the A15 chip, depending on the timing. It'll now bring a USB-C port instead of a lightning port and a smart connector, though what accessories, we don't know. It might also bring a mini LED display, but with recent shortages, we doubt that it'll make the cut. And Ross Young doesn't provide any details on the front, and given the fact that the 11-inch Pro doesn't have it, I doubt it. Apparently we can expect it to launch sometime in Q4 with the iPhones in the September event. We'll keep you posted. If you follow me on social media, you know I travel a lot, which requires me to need a lot of public networks. And at the same time, I'm sure you've noticed that services like Netflix and YouTube are restricted per region. One of my tools of choice to spare myself from any unpleasant surprises is today's sponsor, NordVPN. It's super easy to use, letting you connect with one click or through auto connect to over 5,000 secure servers in over 50 59 countries. And if you're worried about speeds, NordVPN has been confirmed by various speed tests to be the fastest VPN in the market. It lets you connect up to six devices at a time on every major platform like iOS, Android, macOS, or Windows. If you're on the go like me, simply pick a server in the location that you need to be able to unlock your favorite movies, shows, or simply use it to add a more reliable layer of security to whatever public connection you're on. Head on over to nordvpn.com slash pocketnow70 or use promo code pocketnow70 to get a two-year plan plus one additional month at a major discount. And finally, for the hottest news today, let's talk about Samsung once again as things are getting very interesting ahead of their unpacked event. On a new blog post, the company's head of mobile addressed a bunch of things we've been questioning this year and even set some expectations for what we can expect on the August 11th event. On a statement, he pretty much confirms a lot of the rumors. It starts with him saying that they are out to set new heights and open up a new world of exciting experiences for people. He says he hopes we join him to debut their next Galaxy Z family, which brings some foldable surprises, including their first ever S Pen design specifically for foldables. He then went on to confirm that there is no Galaxy Note this year as they will broaden beloved Note features to more Galaxy devices. And in the meantime, we should set our calendars to see what the future holds. Yesterday, I mean, we saw some renders of that S Pen as well as that case that'll be used to hold it in the Z Fold. And if you think of it, the idea of the Galaxy Note features not being limited to just one device or a batch makes sense. You should be able to pick the form factor you want and get the full experience regardless. They also leave some pretty high expectations, which are also backed by that IPX8 certification leaked by Evan Blass yesterday, which finally allows you to consider a foldable like a tool. But anyways, in today's question, let us know, I mean, what is the most amount of money that you're willing to pay for a foldable now that you get all these features? Because in my case, I feel that the price really can't exceed the price of the Ultra, or at least not by much, because in the Ultra, it's the camera. Here, the feature is the fact that it folds. I feel that the pricing just needs to get a little more aggressive, and we have seen that from Samsung this year, but that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me admit the inevitable. I We're back to traveling. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.